Now, for one week, traders in Kampala have been on strike protesting the URS implementation of a tax assessment system called IFRS to determine the value of the value added tax. This was in addition to the heavy penalties associated with tax avoidance, and the traders protest the high hardness of the matter. So, now that the penalties have been suspended, we ask whether the two week suspension of the strike will find a plausible solution. Once again, we have the executive director for the Federation of Small and Medium Scale Enterprises, John Walugembe. Good evening, sir, and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening, Mildred, and thank you for having me here this yeah. evening. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's one week down the road, and yes. you have been following the trader strike and their concerns. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of the impact of the strike? Do you think it uh, I think achieved the, impact, the intended it objectives? It may not have achieved the intended objectives, but I think it has sent out a clear message about particularly the methods of URA. You know, we, we say you can use a carrot and a stick, but you can't be using a stick all the time. So the high-handedness of URA, more than anything, because the traders raised different issues. They raised the issue around VAT, raising the threshold that the 150 million is too low. They raised the issue of the uncompetitive practices of foreign investors. They raised the unclear and unstandardized valuation methods by URA. Uh, but the most important issue, they raised the issue of the import duty on fabric and garments. You know, some of those issues we agree with, some we don't. Like the issue of garments, I completely don't agree with. That's an ESC decision mm, on an external tariff. So I don't think the president ca can and should address that. And in fact, in, the, in his meeting, he hinted on it that we can't keep sending our money out. Mm. Uh, and then the issue of VAT, I agree with. They need to raise a threshold. 150 million, uh, I think, is uh, too low. Mm -hmm. On the issue of the uncompetitive prices, I also agree that we need a strong competition law. The Ministry of Finance said they are coming up with regulations, but we want something really that makes a difference. The law simply talks of a technical committee. We want a competition commission. Even if it has two people, but if it's effective, it's better than having a committee. We will just show up after a week, take tea, take allowances, and then uh, achieve nothing. So I, th I would say that the biggest win for this strike was to communicate and say, you are, we are your clients. You can't treat us the way you choose. Mm. And the way you interpret the law, for instance, if you look at the penalties, a penalty of six million is excessive for you not using an ex, uh, any first receipt. Mm. And then just finding customers and demanding for receipts, you, you're infringing on their privacy and there's no law that backs up that action. So in a sense, your was also engaged in some level of illegality. Mm. And also, and the way they went about this holy freeze thing, in my view, was shambolic. They didn't educate people well. But when this strike such a day, one was saying, we don't want the free tax, we don't want the free So it means people members of there. parliament, important people could not understand that actually if this is simply a solution and that is a what technical platform that one can use to pay tax and so on as opposed to it being the actual tax the tax that we're talking about here is value added tax and that is uh, what actually also raised or brought about confusion on what on what exactly the traders were striking about yes yes yeah but that's well <laughs> there wasn't really m we knew it was if this but the understanding of if this dif differed isn't it mm. so i think that the traders have made their point. Mm. Um, I'm happy. That I don't think they, they insisted on seeing the president. I didn't see the value. In fact, some of the concessions I received from the Ministry of Finance were more generous. Because from the president, they only received one concession. Up which, to two. Which, which was? Which was we suspend the penalties in the meantime. And that's very important. We suspend the penalties in the meantime. I was ready the matter. Then he said he's going to meet the technical technocrats on the 24th of April. And then he'll meet a wider group of traders on the 7th of May at the at, at Kololo Airstrip. Speaking about what the president uh, said, the, there yes. has also been confusion of exactly what transpired there. Yes. There have been different analogies of uh, the IFRIS was suspended, uh, mm. the penalties were the ones that were halted. What no, no, exactly? No, 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 no. The president simply said you are a ought to stop penalizing traders as this matter is studied. That's all. Mm. He did not suspend IFRIS. In fact, the president didn't touch on any of the other issues, like the VAT threshold. He didn't touch on uh, he didn't touch on the issue of uh, the import duty. But on that I heard him say, you people, you are sending out foreign exchange, foreign ex which is correct, because we need to start adding value. 
here at home. If you say we are going to remove the 35% import uh, duty on fabric and garments, then we are just becoming a supermarket for all these other countries. So I agree with him on that position. So he didn't touch that. He didn't touch the issue of the uncompetitive practices by foreign investors. He restricted himself to the IFRIS issue. And he also asked them questions, especially about that foreign exchange issue value. You know, the president is not keen on this trade importation bit. Mm -hmm. And on that, I agree with him. Mm -hmm. He's very keen on industrialization. He's very keen on export promotion as opposed to promoting imports. So I think that traders also need to kind of do some homework. For, okay, so first of all, the traders also made some mistakes. They brought very many issues. You know, when you're having such a strike, you pick one or two issues and you explain them critically. But if you bring eight issues, all your pain points, <laughs> it means that there's a risk that people may ignore. I mean, like but, the president did. But again, you cannot blame them because this is a one-time opportunity. They did have to meet with the president. Yeah, and, but and, when and you are hungry and someone is offering you food, you can't ask for chicken, meat, beans, I cow mean, peas. If ask for one thing that you think is super critical and you get that and you walk away. Hmm. See? So so what has happened is that all the other issues have receded in the background and the IFRIS issue has taken center stage. The president has not even suspended IFRIS but has simply said, uh, one, let us suspend the penalties. But the Ministry of Finance had also made certain concessions. Namely, they are setting up a, an office downtown in Chukube, especially to, to conduct education. Hmm. Then the Ministry of Finance also asked the Commissioner General to give them a list of traders with areas. Eh? So the Ministry of Finance was even more generous. The President's directive is forward-looking. The Ministry of Finance's directive is also backward-looking, saying if you have any areas that you've accumulated, because of these penalties, bring them and then we can consider waiving them, which is a good thing. Okay. They said they are going to study the VAT issue. They also said they are going to study the anti-competition issue because the Ministry of Trade is planning to come out with regulations to ensure that they, we don't have a situation where an investor is retailing, is wholesaling, is transporting and is manufacturing. Okay, now you mentioned that uh, the mm -hmm. penalties of uh, CIFRIS have been, of IFRIS rather, have been waived. Yeah, for the meantime. Yes, the meantime. now that the, the traders are, re are back to business, does mm -hmm. this mean that they are, it is still functioning? They are still IFRIS is still functioning, but what will happen is that if you are a fine you in Chikubo and you've not issued any free receipt, they David. can't issue a six million penalty now in these two weeks. Isn't that giving them leeway, the option of not it's you? Okay, six million was ridiculous anyway. So I think what we need to do for me is the, a, a penalty should be proportional. Mm. You know, you can't issue penalties to just ensure that you cripple people's businesses. Mm. So I think, as I mentioned, URA was also engaging in some extra legal method in, in enforcing uh, in enforcing this if we say mm. solution okay some have have suggested that this problem resulted from the lack of consultation from yes. the parliament from who? from the parliament Consultation with who? With the parliament in regards to, you know, the, the IFRIS and no, the No, parliament is really just using scapegoating. <laughs> you are so where no, is that? You are is not the one that comes up with these laws. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, parliament that passes. Government every year takes bills, tax bills, the income tax amendment acts, the tax procedures uh, act, and, and that is the more VAT to amendment act. So there's adequate consultation. Maybe they, some parliamentarians can say they may not appreciate that detail. Or it could be that URA is overstepping their mandate, like I've said, stopping customers. Customers are not VAT registered. Why do you disturb customers? You know, this, I think, for me, wasn't correct. But for parliamentarians to say they were not aware, they were not consulted, I think they are stretching the truth a bit. Hmm. Yes. So do you, do you foresee any solutions that might come out of the promised uh, engagement that the, uh, the president has for uh, the engagement that you'll be having with the traders, or traders on 7th May? So uh, my, my assumption is that this engagement is going to focus on IFRIS. If it focuses on IFRIS, my proposal is you are you should try to emphasize education. And I think that the agreement with the Ministry of Finance talked about that. You are you should uh, become um, more uh, understanding of the concerns of traders. They should be less high-handed. They should make sure they roll out, uh, uh, they look at who, who bears the cost of compliance. And this is where the issue of the electronic fiscal device is coming. Government should take up that cost so that they supply this to traders. Not just traders, Freely. but business. For free, because why should I pay to comply? <laughs> 
you want me to pay to buy a device to pay you more tax no that's not fair so i think government ought to buy these devices train people how to use them get younger people who have started bcom it set up different set and this is not just an issue in chikuwa because the challenge is that because this strike has taken place in kampala a lot of these discussions are focused on chikuwa traders this is an issue that's cost cutting across uganda that's affecting businesses so we are saying you are as it comes up with solutions shouldn't just seek to make these equal people happy you should seek to come up with a solution that works for the whole country mm -hmm. so it means better education making sure that there's better hand holding you are if you don't have manpower please hire these younger people who have done it who have done become let them go into people's businesses to train them not to enforce but just to support them as they issue receipts and so on after one or two years it everything will be would be okay all right yeah. so finally as we conclude this uh, conversation yes. now this industrial action came at a time when uh, the government had you know introduced or proposed yes. some new taxes how yeah. will this impact those plans by government especially in the coming budget I think people are going to be less accepting of some of these measures because now for, for one reason people understand the impact that this will have okay. so it means government will find it di more difficult to sell some of some of these uh, taxes for especially this five percent tax on uh, proceeds made from the sale of land in municipalities and cities okay. i think this is a not a very good tax mm. and government should look at it again because it will have a negative impact a, on their own rental collections if people are going to be disincentivized to invest in the real estate sector so it means they may end up losing more money mm. uh, and then the other thing is that you want more pe we have a housing deficit in uganda so you actually and government doesn't have money to invest in houses mm. so allow people to use their own money to support you don't you don't tax them from here from there on cement you put 500 shillings excise duty and so on let them build then you simply collect rental tax as simple as that all right yeah. thank you so much You're mr welcome. john walgebe for always yeah. making time uh, to talk to us at least the president managed to convince the traders to get back to work because uh, we don't know to what extent this would affect you know the economy and the country at large well that conversation takes us in for a short break but ntv weekend edition continues shortly <laughs>